what I want to talk to you about today is seven tips for getting from I can't afford that to you bet I can. Hi everyone, it's so good to see you. I am here in beautiful Sedona, Arizona, and to make it really extra special, I'm here in a guest room at the studio of my favorite band when I was in high school. It's kind of a kick. So the band is Chicago, and we're getting to see all of their awards and just amazing stuff. So it's been a total kick to be here. So, what I want to talk to you about today is seven tips for getting from I can't afford that to you bet I can, because we all deserve to have special experiences like this one that my husband and I are having right now. And the universe does come up in the most beautiful and surprising ways when we commit. So, first of all, I want you to know. I know what it's like to not afford something. We've all been there. You've got something you really want to do and you look at your budget and say to yourself, it's not happening. I don't have money for that. I've been there multiple times in my life. And what I've discovered is that if it's really important to me and I make a commitment to it, the money shows up and additional opportunities show up. So here's what I've learned about the practical ways the universe supports us when we make a commitment. And I've used all the tips I'm offering here. All right, number one. And by the way, some of them will sound obvious at first, but hang in there with me because I've got some twists on these that really brings them to life for you. Number one sell something. If you're at all like me, you've got stuff lying around your home, garage, or storage area that you needed to let go of a long time ago. My husband and I have sold furniture, sound equipment, heirlooms, uh, things we didn't use, outdoor equipment, all kinds of things to make money for something we really wanted to do. It's simple and it can be a fast way to create income. Number two, Get creative with services you can offer. For example, I've scheduled new unplanned classes that provided additional income. Plus, here's the really cool thing. Because I was in a creative space, they also provided clients with something unique they really needed I hadn't thought about before. So my need for additional income spurred some creativity to look for a way I could be of even greater service to others. My daughter was pretty clever. When she wanted to come join uh, Jeffrey and I for spirit quests, she would sell tamales and sell them at work in order to earn gas money to come meet us. Everyone comes into this world with multiple talents, of which at least, and usually there are several, but at least one or two of them can help you make money. Number three, all right, there's a caveat with this one. I have put things on a credit card with a plan for how to earn what I needed to pay off the card in a timely way so I wasn't simply accruing debt. And number four, a variation on this, I've taken out loans, for example, with a plan to pay it back, of course, For example, I got a business loan to pay for equipment and classes when I left my job and started my own business as a communications consultant. And it was well worth it because I made more money with my new business in the first year than I had ever made with a job. Now, later on, when I wanted to boost my business further by attending a business training event, I asked for loans from a variety of friends, small loans, and repaid them with interest. Number five, discover new work opportunities through informational interviewing. This is a super hot tip. If you are thinking about offering a new service or starting a new career, a new business, this is a powerful strategy. Interviewing people in the area you want to get into can give you ideas about where there is a need not being met so that you can structure your services to meet the need. 
I have seen people get jobs and establish relationships that got them referrals doing this. And you can look up the strategy online. It's called informational interviewing. Number six, use your intuitive and creative talents. Offer holiday services or gifts like holiday readings or healings or special homemade holiday gifts that your friends can buy for themselves or for their loved ones. And send out a notice to your friends and let them know how this will benefit them or their loved ones. Let them know there's a limited amount of time they can get this because you want to be able to enjoy your holidays, right? You want everything taken care of ahead of time. I recommend making sure you offer a fair price when getting started, but be really careful about underpricing because that is one of the most common mistakes, which actually makes it harder to sell the product. Number seven, if you're thinking, that's nice, Misa, but I'm healing myself right now. I recently did a YouTube video on whether it's a good idea to be of service to others while you are healing. So for that tip, you might want to take a look at the video. And the last tip, be willing to do what is needed. I once knew a very kind, spiritual, wealthy man at a time when I was living out of the back of my truck. And he asked me if I wanted to know how he was able to do so well. And I did. And here's what he said. I'm not above doing any kind of work that needs to be done. You see, from his point of view, providing service to others is a blessing for them and for you. I wish you all the best in getting from I can't afford that to you bet I can. All right, I'll see you in the next Hot Tips video. Music